All right. Hello, San Diego. So we are hoping to tell you today how you can make all of this complexity of the cloud native ecosystem easier to develop and easier to run. So our cloud native systems are really, really complex animals. And we're adding more complexity all the time because we're solving the business challenges of scaling up and scaling out. But there are some challenges that we're introducing that are new problems that we need to solve. Because we have microservices now where we are sending microservice transactions across dozens of different services that are required to complete end user requests. Our systems are now, in the words of Ben Segelman, they're deep systems now. We no longer can hold them all in one person's head. We also have to think about these interactions with our cloud and serverless providers because your faults are no longer localized only in your system, they may be localized in someone else's system. So how do we actually debug these things? And on top of that, we live in a world where every single user experience matters, where it no longer is fair to say, okay, 99% of the ads have served, great, I don't care about the 1%. We care about every end user's experience. So we need to measure and debug service level objectives. But it's really hard to see clearly when we've built all of this complexity, we need new tooling, and we need the ability to observe, to look inside our systems and ask them new questions so that we can understand what's happening under the hood and how we can repair things to keep our users happy. So all of these things are things that we've been busy developing, and it may sound obvious, right, that you need to see into your systems, but if it were obvious, why haven't we done it already? We haven't really done it because it's been hard. There hasn't been a clear path. There hasn't even been a way that we have thought about these words, observability and instrumentation, that has been uniform. There hasn't been a clear distinction. Observability is the ability to ask questions of your system and learn from it. And instrumentation is the tooling that provides your telemetry. Metrics, logs, and traces are the components of the telemetry data that you receive, but they've often been stored in and visualized in different systems. If we had trouble agreeing on the definitions of two words, Ollie, uh, <laughs> observability and instrumentation, imagine the trouble we had defining what an event is. This has led to lots and lots of confusion among the solutions, lock in with particular choices, and a fear of needing to re-instrument your entire system in order to make a change. And so many, many developers decided to roll their own tooling. Oh, this is a dark story. Sorry, take a breath. OK, so let's refocus on the users, because that is a super easy way to start this conversation. You are all our users. You develop systems. You need to introspect about them. You need to observe them. You need to ask them questions. And you need to get answers. We can all agree, right, that asking questions of your telemetry data and learning from your systems is an imperative. OK, does anybody disagree? No, It's good. pretty okay. uncontroversial. Yeah. We thought so, but it was hard to do. So, you know, it's an important start. So since the spring, with this newfound refocus on users, we brought together two projects that had been contributing to some of the confusion. There were two projects here in the CNCF, Open Census and Open Tracing. And these two projects are now Open Telemetry. The two of them had differing specifications, differing focuses, and even implementations of how they thought about observability and telemetry. And so we're bringing them together with consistent vision. This means clarity around a common language and telemetry outputs, and a one-time effort to add instrumentation regardless of the visualization providers, which is always great fun. These providers now also win because you can choose having a clear area to differentiate and delight users. This, this seems like a win-win for everybody. So, Liz, there are so many accomplishments. What are you going to share? So we've been working for the past eight months on integrating open census and open tracing. 
And the primary thing that we were focused on was making sure that we had clear and simple metrics and tracing APIs in order to bring us to feature parity as quickly as possible and develop interfaces that people could develop their instrumentation against. We also focused on making sure that there are migration paths from the past solutions. Make sure that to get started playing around with this, you don't need to necessarily write a lot of new code. And this plays very nicely with your existing network topologies. So you can collect and then proxy and forward on all of your traces and metrics to where they need to go. We also have been focusing on making sure that all of the languages are on the same page, that all of them feel like a native library in your language, but all have the same commonality of the same idioms of open telemetry. So we support seven languages today in addition to having the common language neutral collector. So this is always the fun part. Anybody want to see what we've done? Demos? Demos? Liz, would you demo for us? Yes, I would be glad to. So let's give her a round of applause, because demos are hard. So what I have here is I have an application that computes the Fibonacci series using a microservice, or a set of microservices. So the second Fibonacci number is two. The third Fibonacci number is three. Anyone want to guess what the fourth one is? Five. Five. Very good. So this computes Fibonacci series numbers, but uh, it gets a little slow when you start asking for the 16th Fibonacci series number. I wonder why. Well, maybe it's because I unnecessarily introduced some complexity. <laughs> so let's try to measure and understand what's going on. So I'm going to add in the OTHDP plugin. This enables us to go ahead and measure the performance of an individual RPC or web handler. And it's just a simple drop-in wrapper. So I drop this in on top of my Fibonacci handler, give it a descriptive name, and I'm off to the races. So now, this does me absolutely no good if I can't actually output this somewhere. Fortunately, we have Jaeger. Jaeger, which recently graduated, is now the project that I'm going to be demonstrating how we can actually add this instrumentation with. So let's first of all recompile to make sure that I didn't break anything. And can I still compute the Fibonacci series? No, I cannot. The reason is, I suspect that I failed to import the right things. Let's have a look at my console. Ah, this is the danger of doing live demos on stage. Um, so what am I missing here? I am missing an additional parenthesis right there. There we go. Much better. So let us wait for that to load up. In the meanwhile, let's talk about what we're going to do next. So what we need to do next is we need to hook up the Open Telemetry SDK, and we need to connect to it the uh, Jaeger backend. So yes, this indeed works. Great. So let's connect in the Jaeger backend. So I didn't want to type this all out by hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end comment some of these imports, and then I'm going to paste a blob of code out of my handy notes that I took. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, flashcards. So we need a new provider. So let's go ahead and instantiate the provider. And we need to give it a configuration, which tells it to sample everything. Because I don't want to have to hit this endpoint 10,000 times before I show you any results. I'd rather show you this after one. So let's go ahead and do that real fast. So let's give it a sampler that has a value of always sample. The thing that you kind of can't tell here is that my hands are actually kind of shaking here, because this is uh, a little bit nerve-wracking. I've never done hard. this before uh, in front of 10,000 people, but this, you know, there's a first to everything. OK. So. <laughs> now we have a new trace provider. And now we need to pass this into the global trace provider so that the open telemetry HTTP instrumentation knows where to find it. So let's stop there and see whether this works. And if it doesn't, I'll get a lovely compiler message, and I'll know that I need to do a little bit more work. OK, so we are having an error because I'm not yet using the Jaeger uh, exporter. Well, that's easy enough to fix, so let's go ahead and add the Jaeger exporter. So I need to configure it, but fortunately, I've already done the hard work to configure the secrets of where to send the data. So all I need is to pull up my cheat notes and go ahead and paste in the data about how to access the open, uh, the open telemetry Jaeger uh, backend. So we're going to add in the instantiation of the Jaeger exporter. 
oh wow, I'm doing pretty good in time. Great. So we're going to go ahead and pass this in here. And it also needs to know a service name, which I happen to know is the host name, which is Hotel KubeCon Demo. So now that I have this working, uh, let's go ahead and indent that correctly. So now we just need to tell this thing, hey, by the way, you are supposed to also, uh, in addition to taking the config, you need to also take in a exporter and send every span you collect over to Jaeger. Okay, great. So let's see whether that works. Okay, that computes a value. Let's have a look over in the Jaeger UI. And let's see what traces I find. Ooh, this is not actually a collection of traces. This is a collection of individual trace spans. I'm missing an ingredient. What do you think I might be missing, Sarah? I'm not the developer. What I'm missing is context propagation. I need to pass along the trace identifier saying, hey, by the way, that initial request that I started from the command line here, that actually pertains to all of the downstream requests. I was going to say that. So let's go ahead and add some instrumentation for that. So what we need to do is we need to do two things. We need to go ahead and add in the tracer, and we need to go ahead and tell it to trace all of this code. So down here, where I'm calculating this in a really silly way, I currently have a function that takes an integer and runs, a, uh, and, and runs the client calls. So instead of doing this in this way, what I need to do instead is I need to do it like this. So right now, I'm calling this with the uh, offset. So let's go ahead, and instead of doing this, let's go ahead and wrap it inside of something else. So what we need to do is, this is slightly different than the code that I originally thought I was working on. Um, so let's go ahead and add in the HTTP client instrumentation. So in order to add the HTTP client instrumentation, I also need the HTTP tracer, which I have here. So let's go ahead and look at my flashcards and see what I was, I was supposed to do with this. Ah, yes, that is exactly what I was supposed to do with this. So inside of here, what I have is I'm issuing an outbound HTTP request. So I need to pass it all of my trace headers. And this means that I need to be aware, even in here, of what my request context is. So I need to define the request context. And then what I need to do is I need to go down here, and I need to go ahead and say, I am going to I am going to pass in this instead. Let's do that really fast. Great. Something like that should do the trick, and it just needs to be indented correctly, which is easy enough to fix. Okay. And the other bit that I was looking for was actually in here. There we go. Now this is looking much more familiar. Great. So now I'm passing in the trace headers and making sure that they're propagated along nicely. So the final thing that I need to do here is I need to make sure that I'm wrapping this, uh, that I'm wrapping this client call. So instead of, uh, instead of just doing the client call by itself, now what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do the uh, tracer.withspan. And I'm going to pass in the uh, fib client to indicate that this is a client, uh, inner client span. I'm just passing the bare function. This does leave one missing thing, which is that I also need a trace provider. If I don't have a trace provider, all of my span names would collide. So let's fix that really quickly and do this up here. So I have a tracer, and I'm just going to fetch the uh, tracer from named after my own domain name. Okay, so hopefully this will compile. And if not, we'll have a little bit of debugging to do. I did not use API trace. Ah, I know why I did not yet use API trace. I did not yet use API trace because I also wanted to do one more thing. I wanted to record what the, uh, what the parameter that was passed in was. So in a moment, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to pass in the parameter. So if I pass in the parameter saying, hey, by the way, what I need is I need to pass in I'm going to pass in saying, hey, this is what my, my query parameter is. Great. I think that should probably do it. Uh, what does my thing say? Oh, key and connects are not used. Um, 
why are key and context in here? Oh, I know why key and context are not in here. Uh, that's because I needed them. Okay, so that's uh, simple enough to do. So key, and I also need context, which I conveniently had left for myself here as a, comp as a pointer. Excellent. So now I'm initializing the server, and now I can go fetch it. So now I get a result. I can go look over here, and I can see some glorious trace bands. But wouldn't it be nice if I could send not just to one provider, but instead to four different providers? That's what I'm about to show you. I am about to show you exporting not just to Jaeger, but also exporting to multiple different ecosystem partners that are all working together on OpenTelemetry. So for instance, we have uh, some folks who are, who are from Google, some folks from Honeycomb, and some folks from Lightstep who have all put some very hard work into making this actually work. So if I did this correctly, then what I will get in a moment, as soon as I copy paste this out of my sneaky little buffer, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab all of this code here, and I'm just going to paste it right into my function. Because this will never possibly go wrong. <laughs> Said with the knowing laugh of, of, of everyone who's ever read, written code. <laughs> so let's go ahead and add some more exporters. And let's go ahead and also add in the additional calls to use those exporters. Is this the part where I get to say visualize this? Yes, you could say visualize this. So. I think that should work, so let's restart it and see whether this works. This might come back with an error. Oh no, it's, fet it's fetching all of these things. Uh, that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and disable my read-only mod and see whether this works. And after that, we'll go ahead and tell you about what's ahead for OpenTelemetry. So if I go back over here. Uh, we are fetching, oh, I see. That is my bad. I accidentally typed honeycomb by yo instead of honeycomb. Simple typos. My code was actually correct the first time around. Okay, here we go. And if I go ahead and preemptively open this, assuming that it's going to work, let's go ahead and make a request and see what happens. Still compiling. Still compiling. And we have an error. OK. Uh, I'm going to leave this here, but, I'm going to, but if I had typed all of the code correctly with the correct letters, it would have worked correctly. So let's go back and uh, <laughs> let's just give her a hand. Woo! So tell us what's ahead. The main thing that we need to work on is stability. We have a lot of stability work to make sure that people can safely put open telemetry into production. We have seven different languages to synchronize, as well as the collector. And we need to make sure that everything is rock solid going into Q1. So hopefully by next KubeCon, we'll have a beta or a stable release to announce. We also have been working on integrating not just with Jaeger, but also with uh, services like Prometheus and Zipkin. And I, we have to say, on behalf of the governance committee, where both Liz and I sit, we want to thank both the open telemetry, and both the open tracing and the open census contributors for their laser focus and identification of user needs in this, bringing the projects together, as well as being egoless and willing to collaborate on open telemetry, sunsetting these two projects that had competing standards. We also need to thank the entire ecosystem around the observability and visualization providers and the, their end users who have actually contributed to this project. This is a whole lovely slide like that. And on behalf, again, of the Governance Committee, we get to say thank you for the CN, to the CNCF for accepting our project, Open Telemetry, as a sandbox project with this grand vision, and not, not as much of the, the execution yet. We're working on that. And also to invite you all to participate in the project and join us making observability the as an imperative, a reality. Thank you. <laughs>